Hey everyone, welcome back to Invest Stream. I'm Pankaj, and today I'm going to talk about how do you protect your idea when you're talking to investors. Coming up next. So welcome back everyone. People get worried sometimes that their idea is going to get stolen by investors or if they talk to folks about it, they're going to take the idea and run away with it. Well, that could be true, but does it really matter? From my experience, and this is my experience as a founder as well as, as an investor, it really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how well you execute your idea. When I was starting up uh, back in 2006, seven, somewhere in that time frame, I had an idea for a marketplace for domestic and unskilled labor. I thought this was pretty unique. I decided that I was gonna move to India and start building this out. It turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it would be, but while I was there, I was introduced to somebody and we were chatting and we're talking about our startup experiences and etc. And by that time, I, I don't think I had shut my startup down, but I think I was about to shut my startup down. We started talking about what he was doing and he, was, he had also worked on a very similar idea. The two of us came up with this idea 7,000 miles apart. We had no connection to each other, never spoken to each other. I was living in New York, he was living in New Delhi. He came up with an idea very similar to mine. Our implementations were a little bit different on how we would do it, but we were solving the same basic need, providing jobs to the unskilled labor force and providing uh, folks with domestic help. A lot of people have the same ideas. The difference is most people don't wind up executing those ideas. So very few people do. Coming back to when you're talking to investors, should you be worried about investors taking your ideas? No, you shouldn't be worried about investors taking your ideas. They've probably seen similar ideas before or they've heard about them. If they wanted to take the ideas and build a business out of it, they would. The difference is most investors are not in that frame of mind. They're no, in a lot of cases, they're not entrepreneurs or they've never been entrepreneurs. So it really doesn't matter to them, right? Now, there is something that could potentially be a concern, and that's if they've invested in a similar company and it's in their portfolio, and you give them some information that they then pass on to their portfolio company. That That is a problem, that is a danger, that does happen at times, but you as a founder should be doing your due diligence on investors, just as investors are going to do their due diligence on you. I've said this before in previous videos, so make sure you watch them. It's really important for you to do your research and talk to other founders that have either pitched an investor and not received money or pitched an investor and received money. Talk to them about how things went. Find out if the investor is scrupulous or not. You know, read up on it, talk to people and find out what kind of reputation do they have. If they've got a very good reputation, I don't think you really need to worry about information passing over. If they don't have a very good reputation, don't go pitch them. Simple as that. The whole business of investing in startups, whether you're a VC or you're an angel, is your reputation. If you build a reputation as being unscrupulous or untrustworthy, you're not going to get the best deals over time. If you build a reputation as being somebody that's good to work with, somebody who's trustworthy, you'll continue to see really great deal flow over time and have an opportunity to invest in the, in the best company. So it's not in your interest to take information or ideas from other founders and either execute them or give them to somebody else. So the last thing I want to say is because investors generally see so many pitches, they see hundreds if not thousands of pitches per year, it becomes very difficult for them to practically track every single NDA that a founder would ask them to sign. I personally signed no NDAs. I've never signed any NDAs during my investment career, and I never plan to. If a founder insists that they want an NDA signed, I say, well, you know, either my reputation speaks for itself, or you don't have to pitch me, right? So it's just practically impossible to track every single NDA 
and adhere to that NDA. And if every investor signed every NDA that somebody sent to them, the whole startup and investor ecosystems would completely halt. They would be worse than you know any sort of bureaucratic government agency. Nothing would ever get done. Now, the final thing I want to say, any debt that is being mailed out, you should mail out something that you're perfectly fine with somebody slopping on Twitter or Facebook or SlideShare or wherever and it being completely out in the public. Don't put any information in that debt that you initially email out that could be proprietary information that you wouldn't want in the public, right? So I hope that was helpful. I hope it explains a little bit about why investors don't sign NDAs and why you really shouldn't worry about investors taking your information and your idea and stealing it. If you found the video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notified whenever I put up a new video. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you again next time.